Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. In this video, I'm going to be installing the pistons in this 5.7 liter V8 engine. Uh, it's going on a Volvo Penta boat, but it's the same as a Mercruiser. That's why I use Mercruiser in the title. It seems to be Mercruiser more popular engine. But um, anyway, so what I've done is um, I've already, this is cylinders one, three, five, and seven, and I've already checked the ring gaps in, in those cylinders, and I'll discuss what that is in a second. And then I've just checked the ring gaps in two, four, six, and eight. So these are the top rings. And what I do is I mark them. This was in cylinder two. I mark them with a Roman numeral uh, system. Uh, two dashes for two. Um, four would be um, IV. Six would be VI. And eight is VII. And the more significant digit is at the gap. So the V, if you see the I before the V, it's IV and then it's VI. So anyway, um, so it's two, four, six, eight on this side, and then the one, three, five, seven. And like I said, I mark them with Roman numerals on the top. This is the top ring, so I mark them with Roman numerals. There's a second ring gap that I'm fixing to do in a minute. I mark them with um, Arabic numerals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, what we're used to. Uh, I do that so if I get the rings mixed up, I always know which one to switch. So I'm about to uh, put these back over there and check the second ring gap. So let me discuss the gap. Um, these are sealed power rings that came out of a box. Um, so let me show you the box here. This is the set that came out of the uh, E251K30. These are 30,000 oversized rings for 30,000 oversized pistons. They go on these pistons here. Um, so the ring gap um, factory specs is 0 0.010 thousandths to 20 thousandths to 0 0.020 to 20 thousandths. Um, I previously did a male, uh, I did a 3.0 liter, it's all 3.0 liter Mercruiser, it also has 4 inch pistons, and this is the piston rings that came out of here, and the instructions with this box said to use um, 0 .004 inches per inch of bore, well 4 inch bore times 0 .004 is 0 .016, so 0 .016 is the recommended ring gap from, for those man, from those rings, and then, uh, then the piston manufacturer recommends you go 40% over because these are hyper eutectic pistons. So 40% over, and this is the same thing I did on 3.0, 40% over 0 0.016 is 0 0.022. So using a field gauge set on 0 0.022, so let's show it on here, there it is, 0 0.022, I checked all these top rings and they are pretty much 0 0.022. I got real lucky that they're all already gap properly. Um, some, well, some of them are just a tiny bit tight and some of them are just a little tiny loose. So, but, but even on average they're all 0 .022. So I get pretty lucky and I don't have to file these rings. They're ready to go. So that was the top ring set and that's true from all eight of them too. So all of these checked out to 0 .022. I'm now about to uh, check the second ring gap and uh, I'll uh, let you know what the results of that is and I'll show you how to check the gap itself. All right, I am now checking the uh, second ring gap on the cylinders two, four, six, and eight. And um, so the gaps were 22 on this one, 20 on that one, these are thousands, 18,000 on that one, and 22,000 on this one. Now the range is different uh, according to my manual. It's a Vortec 5.7 manual. I'll post a link to it on the, on, at the end of this video. Um, the specs on the second ring gap are different. It's 0 0.018 to, I don't even remember what the high number is. I think it's 0 0.026, but the, they're giving a, a wider ring gap for the second ring than they are for the bottom ring. So this one is just inside the range, it's 0 0.018, and the minimum was 0 0.018. This was 0 0.020, and the other two were 0 0.022. Um, so I'm gonna go with these rings as they are. Um, let me make one more comment. When you look at the range, if you see a dot, um, if the ring has a is directional, meaning it has the top, it has a top and a bottom, there'll be a dot or something showing you what which one is top. So that dot right there means this, this ring is the top. That's the top facing up. Um, also, um, these are sealed power rings, uh, like I showed you the box E two fifty one K or something like that. Um, when you build a motor, the majority of the money is in the labor, not the parts. These rings cost them, I think thirty five dollars, thirty two dollars a box. Um, 
The male rings that I used on the 3.0, apparently they're, they're a four inch bore also, and they're the same exact size as E-rings. So they're probably, those male rings are probably working this 5.7 also. Those rings, I had to file them. They were, uh, I think the gaps were uh, 0 0.012 from memory, 0 0.012, 0 0.013 out of the box. So I had to file them to up to 0 0.022. Filing rings is a time consuming process. You're looking at probably 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes per ring to get it, to, to uh, do it right. So um, that might be a little high, but the point is you got some labor involved if the rings don't, if the rings have to be filed. So I, these rings so far, I don't have to file them. So that saved me a lot of time. I mean, it saved me probably a good, uh, what, uh, hour and a half, two hours on this build, not having to gap all these rings. So, um, I'm fixing to check the second groove in the next set. And, uh, hopefully I won't have to file those either. And then I can just put them on the pistons and put these pistons in. All right, um, I'm about to uh, check the ring gaps on the uh, cylinders one, three, five, and seven. Then this is the big, what's considered the driver side of a car, or the driver side of the motor on the car. I uh, just want to show you a little trick I use. Um, I'll take a piston. You don't have to necessarily put the rings on it. I use the piston to push these rings down in the bore an equal amount all the way around. Just kind of push it down even with the second ring. Rock, you know, rock a little bit. Push them down to it. It's about level with the second ring. Doesn't have to be that precise. So, and then there you go. So now all the rings are down in the board, just approximately the same amount. And now I'm gonna check the gap. And uh, hopefully I don't have to gap these either. All right. Um, now I'm gapping the rings on the uh, rings one, three, five, and seven on the what I consider the driver side engine port side of the boat. Um, so when I checked these gaps, the first gap I measured was less than 0 0.018. Uh, I think all four of them actually, one of them was right on the money, right at 0 0.018, but the rest of them were slightly under point. I didn't bother to check it under because I knew it was not gonna work. So um, on this side, I did have to file these rings. So I pulled each ring out one at a time and I come over here and I have, this is my homemade ring gap tool. So I have a Dremel tool and have a quick disconnect um, I don't know, a grinding wheel or a cutoff wheel, they call it. It's one of those quick disconnect hubs for my Dremel tool. And I just turn it up to, uh, I don't see what speed is that. That would be speed eight, I guess. I turn it by eight, and then I lightly touch the one end of the uh, ring, rock it back and forth. And then I take the burrs off the end on the inside and then the outside edge. And, uh, I think I, I grind them for about 10 seconds and uh, I just went ahead and did all four rings all at one time instead of trying to put them in and measure and put them in and measure. So I did all four rings and I just checked them with, uh, this is my point, I'm going to focus here, give you something to focus on. Now this point is 022 and you can see it goes right through 0 0.022 like butter now. So all of them are more than 0 0.022. So these are all good. Let me make sure that one's right. Yeah, that's good. So now all the gaps are at least 0 0.022. I'm not even gonna check to see if it's bigger. I don't care. So um, now all these, uh, these four rings are now gapped to 0 0.022 or better. So I'm gonna uh, take them off, mark them. I'm gonna mark this one uh, one, three, five, and seven with the Arabic numeral because these are the second ring gaps. And uh, then I'll put them on the pistons. So um, I'll, I'll talk, I guess I'll check the oil ring gap too. You're supposed to check that gap too, but I've never had a problem with those. All right, so uh, moving on with the ring gapping and uh, we'll continue on until all the gap, rings are gapped. All right, I've now finished gapping all the rings. Uh, all 16 oil uh, control rings were gapped and uh, I just left my Filler gauge at 0 0.022 and checked them. They were all over that, so that's within spec, so they're good. Um, I just want to make a, uh, another comment that uh, the second ring, the uh, the top ring gap is increased by 40% because these are hyper eutectic pistons. Uh, they are supposed to have some uh, retained heat more and cause the upper ring to heat up more, so that's why you need the extra 40%. They, they say you can keep the second ring uh, factory, the gap at factory, which, like I said, was 0 0.018 to 0 0.0. Two six. I don't remember the upper number. Um, 
but again um, you don't have to set you don't have to increase the second gap by 40 percent so on this uh, to recap i had to gap the rings the second ring gap on this side um, to um, 0 0.022 and the other side i didn't have to i didn't have to gap so um, that that might be a clue to something i'm going to get my board, dial board gauge and check the bores to make sure these are exactly 4.030 i think i remember doing that when i first got this block back to the machine shop but the fact that I had to file rings on this side and not the other side, that may be, that may be a clue that I need to check that again. So I'll do that. Uh, I'll check the bore one more time before I assemble this motor. So that wraps up the uh, uh, gap in the piston rings. The next step is to st install the piston rings on the piston. Um, I basically, I've got another video on how to do that. I'll link it in this video. I'm not going to show that again. Um, it's a kind of a tricky process of clamping the piston and rod between your legs and using your hands to put the rings on. It's more of an art than it is a science. Um, and once I get all the rings on the pistons, I'll then put them in this engine. All right, I've uh, moved on quite a bit since the last segment and um, I've got three pistons installed on the uh, port side of the engine. This is number one, number three, and number seven. I haven't installed number five yet because that's the odd cylinder that, uh, or that's the odd uh, rod that had a problem. I'm going to put it in last. I haven't even made it up yet. I just want to get these pistons in and get them off my table. So I've got one, like I said, one, three, and seven installed. And uh, I'll show you a little trick that a local uh, machine shop told me. Um, they make a special tool to help rotate the engine around, but you can take a crescent wrench and put it on the main snout here. And uh, so we get adjusted right. So we can take the pressure wrench and it and kind of just put it on the snap, and then when it hits the key, it rotates the crank. So you can rotate the crank around with this kind of, with this tool. So you can see the crank rotating with just a crescent wrench. I imagine when I get all eight pits in there, it's going to be a lot harder to turn than this. But just want to show you a little trick. But anyway. Um, so I'm now fixing to move on to two on this side, two, four, six, and eight. And I'll show you how I do number two, just to show you how I do one of them. I'm not gonna show all eight. I'll just show you one, you can figure out the rest. All right, I'm about to put the piston in cylinder number two. It's right here. The uh, first thing I've done is uh, I've got the syringe hole. Um, I've got a, a squirt bottle too, but that, that's a little bit hard to manage or you pull on a little bit and it squirts a lot of oil. The syringe is, uh, puts out a little bit of oil as I push the plunger just a little at a time. So it's less, uh, it's a lot easier to use. So what I've done first is I've, I've smeared oil. I put the oil on my finger and smeared it around this bore. Um, you have a choice of either putting the oil on the bore or on the piston. And to me, it makes a little less mess if you just go ahead and smear um, about an inch or two inch film of oil on the cylinder itself. So next, um, to prep this piston, I've taken the bearing cap off and then uh, I've got these two pieces of rubber flexible hose that are about two inches long and you see how I've cut notches. Let's see if I focus on that. So you see I've cut notches on the uh, two the two hoses. That way they're easy to pull off. They don't get pinched in, in between the uh, bearing and the journal. And these are just to guide the uh, piston rod down on the, on the uh, crankshaft and uh, keep the bolts from nicking the crankshaft. I've discussed these before. Um, so to prep this piston, I'm going to smear, I'm going to put a few drops of oil in each of these rings. I'm going to hold the piston like this uh, sideways and I'll put um, two or three drops of, or four or five drops of, of oil in each one of these grooves, the, the lower groove, the middle groove, and the upper groove. And then I'm going to, uh, uh, I find the gap in the, I turn all the rings to the gap spacing straight up and I put the, fill that gap up with oil. And then I turn the piston horizontal or, or rotate the rings a little bit and then I turn it horizontal and uh, spin the rings all the way around. And that distributes the oil in the grooves all the way around. All right. Once that's done, I set the piston down in the uh, cylinder and uh, then I use my ring compressor to uh, compress the piston. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, one thing I wanna make a point of is, uh, so obviously this, I've talked about it before, but that dot represents the front of the piston. So it faces the front of the engine, which is what you're looking at there. But um, um, if you're out in doubt, when you put these rods, half the rods go on one way and half the rods go on the other way. And what you're looking for is this chamfer. This chamfer on the rod right there must be facing 
the uh, radius of the crankshaft. Uh, in other words, the, the flat side of the rods, both the rods, the flat sides are butt up against each other. The chamfer goes over towards the crank side. Okay, I now have set the piston down in the bore. I've not put the ring compressor on it. I've just set it in there and it's resting on the lower uh, oil control rings. So at this time, I'm gonna take my ring compressor, which is right here, and uh, expand it back out, put it over the piston, and tighten it down, not all the way, but enough for a little bit, just to put some friction on it so it'll hold the piston up. Then reach in and push the piston up from underneath, put my hand down in here, find the rubber, that rubber uh, piece of hose, push up on it just to push the piston up in the ring compressor about a half an inch. Then tighten the ring compressor almost all, it's not as tight as I can, but tighten it till it quits, uh, till it hits the last notch. And then, uh, then use a, uh, I use the tip of that rubber hammer right there, or the rubber handle of that hammer, to tap the piston down in the hole. I don't add any more oil to it. I just tap it down in there. I've already pre-oiled the cylinder. And uh, before I close this engine up with heads, I'll put some more oil on the cylinders. But for now, I'm just trying to get them in there. All right, the ring compressor is now on the piston. And you can see I've got it snugged up pretty tight. It's uh, compressing the rings all the way around. The piston is sitting up inside the ring compressor. It's not flush like it was when I, before I put the ring compressor on. It's, it's up inside the ring compressor, maybe a half inch to three quarters of an inch. And so I tighten the ring compressor. And while I'm tightening, I put my hand on the top here to push down. This thing is just kind of a sleeve. So the inside can ride up or whatever. So you want to put your hand on top to push all edges down flush with the block as you tighten up the ring compressor. So I, I tighten it up very snug. Get all the rings compressed, and then I take this hammer in and just tap that piston down in the hole. And once you once you tap it down the hole, and the piston goes fully into the bore, the ring compressor just pops off because there's nothing for it to hold on to anymore. All right, I've now tapped the piston down the bolt and the bore. The ring compressor popped loose. I set it over there, and now all I have to do now is push this piston down into the all the way down to the bottom of the bore with my hand. Um, don't tap it with the hammer. Just push it down your fingers, and then uh, it'll. It'll hit the uh, crankshaft. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is put lubricant on the bearing in the uh, rod. But um, what I'll do is uh, push this all the way down, flip it over, and then put lubricant on the uh, crankshaft. All right, once I flip the engine upside down, um, I just before I pull the uh, rod all the way up in here, I just put a few drops on the crankshaft journal, and it by gravity it ran to the back side of it, or ran underneath, and then uh, I pull the rod on up on the crankshaft, and then uh, Put the uh, put oil on the rod, the, the bearing cap, the, the part that says 2.8. I put a few drops of oil on each of the uh, rod the rod bolts before I put the nuts on. That helps to uh, helps to torque it down easier. So um, I had to put the nuts on and torque it. I'm torquing these to 42 foot pounds. Okay, the rod is now torqued in place. I meant to say 45 foot pounds in the last segment. Uh, it's saying 45 foot pounds is what I torque them to. So now these two rod, these two rods are fastened in, and uh, one thing you might notice um, that I'm, as I'm putting these pistons in, I haven't done any plastic gauge. Uh, I'm not, I won't ever do plastic gauge again. So you can see I've already wrote, I've already wrote the clearance on the on the bearing cap. It was, it's 2.8 on this one, 2.75. I'm trying to match the clearances close to each other on the same journal, but that was 2.75 and that was 2.8. So. Um, um, there's no need to do plastic gauge because I've already checked my clearances with my dial board gauge in the previous videos. So I don't I don't need to do the plastic gauge thing. It's making this go much faster. So that's number two. I'm going to finish up with doing, uh, I'm going to keep on going and do um, four, four, six, and eight, and then come back and do five last. And then this uh, all the pistons will be in in this engine. So that's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if you uh, found this video helpful.